asked my, my brother had anything that he'd like to share. Uh, yes, I um, appreciate uh, Mr. Hackley uh, inviting us here today. Um, I look at this as a, a privilege. Um, just seeing all the uh, different uh, multicultural uh, people that are here in uh, Fort Wayne, I did not know that there were so many different cultures and uh, so many different uh, races, if you will, of people. I don't like to say races because I believe we all are the human race. Yeah. And um, I found it very interesting when he spoke to us about the Native American uh, tribes that were in this city. Because in our belief, we uh, share a, a lot with the Native Americans. Uh, we believe that uh, you have been spoken to and that you are a very special people. And um, we believe that you have been spoken to by the Messiah also. But we believe the whole world has been spoken to. We don't want to just distinguish you. But we, uh, we have found through, like uh, my pastor said, through uh, research and study and just talking to family members that uh, a lot of so-called African Americans intermingled a lot with the so-called Native Americans. And uh, it, it, it's been proven. My pastor here, like you said, has, had, uh, has Cherokee people in his um, family. And I think what we're missing, being Americans, is that this country has a big issue with race, if you want to say race. But it has a big issue with dividing us by class and race. And I think uh, I just want to commend Mr. Hackley for bringing us all together so that we don't have to just uh, speak so much on what we have different differences that we have, but what we have in common. As uh, Mr. Hackley spoke about earlier, a lot of us have come here through uh, political strife, uh, uh, military uh, issues, and so forth, but we're all here. And it was real interesting when uh, the uh, man from Nigeria spoke earlier about the multicultural association that he belongs <coughs> to. I did not even know that that was here. And um, I'm glad that I was enlightened on that, and we will be trying our best uh, prayerfully to work with them. And I just want to thank everyone uh, here uh, just for coming here and allowing me to be here. I really didn't know what to say, but I just wanted to say something because I just felt so moved in the back and listening to everyone. And I'm looking forward to listening to uh, the chief speak also. Thank you. to thank our wives uh, and all that came. I mean, this is a time to where we come together as a quote-unquote melting pot mm -hmm. to bring forth the things that uh, the world tries to separate us on. Mm -hmm. For the scripture speaks about peace and unity and through religion and religious guise and religious manifestos, peace and unity is never looked upon. You know, one thing I want to ask you about because uh, some are more biblically literate than others. Mm -hmm. I talk to people, and especially with, about uh, Manifest Destiny, uh, you know, when you start talking about uh, did God really ordain the killing of uh, people across this land and slavery and things like that, and, and, and I don't want to call them religious fanatics because that's kind of insulting. But, uh, <coughs> Does anyone have a, a, a thesaurus here? Mm -hmm. I need another word for fanatic. Otherwise, I wouldn't say fanatic. <laughs> Extremely. <laughs> but my, 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 my point is, people have automatic answers when they go to scripture to justify doing these atrocities to people. Mm -hmm. How do people, and why do people ma manipulate Bible scripture to make a point uh, to justify oppression, suppression, what have you? When people and man use any religion to support their injustices over another man, that's called dogma. That's called man's way of trying to elevate himself to a role of supremacy or man trying to put himself to where the most high should be. Uh, when we look at the, the crusades, the, the inquisitions, and all of these atrocities under the banner of religion, it is man. It is man doing it to eradicate and to maintain 
power and prestige. Um, during the, the middle passage uh, in his book, um, it's called They Came Before Columbus, um, Ivan Van Sertima speaks of the Catholic monk by the name of Bartholomew de las Casas. And as a man that's supposed to be a priest and a man that um, should look for, on the needs of others, he gave the word to begin genocide in the, uh, in the islands, if you will. So if the father spoke of peace and, and, and <coughs> love and turning the other cheek in this time and in this dispensation, then you get a religious organization that says kill, 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 um, and then um, degrade another people of humanity that is looked upon not as what the word says, but as what mankind is trying to manipulate the word to say. You know, a lot of times we can communicate through poetry. Mm -hmm. I remember a poem and, uh, from the early Americans, and it says, Let God know our willingness, for that our intent is good. We hope to plant a nation where none before has stood. And I, I thought, I mean, all that stuff, I thought, I thought it was very interesting. But one more thing here before you go. You hit a couple points that, <clears throat> you know, you, you said that we need to know these things about different people. A lot of these things that we're taught aren't going to be taught anymore because these kids are learning how to pass the I-step test. <laughs> and, um, and by learning the I-step, uh, what's required there, learning about community, is people, that's not going to help you to be, saying a modern day slave is too strong, but to be a worker in a workplace, you know, and that's what we're facing, but yet, like something else that you said, um, standing, I think you quoted Gandhi, you know, standing up and, and, and speaking the truth in a plantation environment, people aren't doing that because they want to be, um, they want peace, you know, they don't want to be ostracized. So how are you going to have a progressive movement when people don't want to be ostracized for standing up for what they believe, but when the doors are shut, they'll talk. And when the cameras are off, they'll talk. <laughs> like Chuck Bell, brother. <laughs> well, um, I, I would like to tackle it a little bit. Um, but when you talked about uh, people standing up and speaking, a lot of that has to come from learning from your family, uh, from um, elders, uh, chiefs, and so forth. Uh, a lot of uh, our history unfortunately now is not being passed down through oral tradition. But we find through history that someone always steps up and wants to keep alive their tradition, their heritage, their beliefs. And as long as there is uh, just one voice, a lot can be done. Uh, you have your program. Uh, we have our program, which is called Come to the Knowledge, because a lot of people just don't have the knowledge of who they are, of where they came from, of where their people came from, and we need these types of forums and more of them. It's really a big problem and it's really a big issue, but as long as we have this right here, the microphone in front of us, we need to keep speaking into the microphone and speak and speak and speak until you are heard. And unfortunately, I really want to tell the young people that we have to uh, cut back on the video game. Uh, cut back on the uh, sporting events just a little bit and share some time with the older people in your family. Uh, keep the oral tradition alive and then you can keep a lot of your, your history, your personal history as well as uh, your cultural history as well as world history and true world history. Not uh, so much his story but your story can be alive. Um, Tony had spoke um, from Nigeria, and he, one thing that he said is that, you know, the hue of a lot of people may be the same, but in understanding, it, the thing that could separate would be the language. And that could be the biggest barrier, because that, in communicating, we need to be able to understand one another. Mm -hmm. If we are not willing to come together and understand cultural, cultures, language, uh, uh, traditions, practices. Uh, if we're taught 
that one people or one group of people are savages, this group of people are less than human, then that goes back to being re-educated, totally being re-educated, not based upon what man is saying. You know, Eric, one, one thing that you're, you're uh, that we spoke at the library that we talk about callings. The scripture declares that gifts and callings come without repentance. The Father may place something in our lives and have us to do it, but are we willing to do it? In the midst of persecution, in the midst of people talking about us, or will we take the excuse or the easy route and say, well, nobody wants to hear it, so I might as well, why should I do it? Uh, uh, you know, quote, unquote, black people don't want to know nothing. You know, these are some of the, the, the things that could discourage, and I encourage you uh, to keep going. One thing as, as a I want to end in the book of James, um, the half-brother of Yeshua said that pure religion is this, to look on the needs of the needy, to seek justice, have love and charity. It's not about, you know, uh, we think religion is going to church. It's not religion, that's practicing tradition. The Father declares that these things, that without love, we can have money and everything. Without love and charity, we have nothing. So we must come together in love and charity and true unity. Thank you very much. Thank you.